My name is Edwin Twine, aka uh, Eddie Jack, an artist, a visual artist, a painter, and um, an event photographer. Well, I, I, I attended high school from St. Joseph's Vocational School. In my vacation, I got uh, a small job with one of the media houses. I was trained to do uh, photojournalism. I was trained to do marketing as doing the two things at once. How I got into fine art, make it a, a main hustle. Uh, in lockdown, that was around uh, 2020, I think July, July there. I started uh, focusing so much on art. I was always doing art in my free time. Sketches, few sketches for my friends, um, for the family, and they could say, oh, wow, this is nice. Oh, this is nice. Is it you who did this? I would say yes. Oh, but we didn't know you could do art. I was like, you know, I didn't take it serious. Some people actually were saying, ah, Eddie, this is not you. You're lying or someone else did it and so on and so on. Until one of the friends uh, visited me at my place and uh, saw me how I was doing this work. And I said, wow, by the way, you can earn from us. I didn't take it serious anyway, since I was doing work uh, for free. So uh, all I did, was uh, I started doing this work for my friends for free. I wasn't charging them. I was doing it as leisure since I had nothing to do. In Corona, I could wake up in the morning, eat, sleep, eat, sleep, eat, sleep. So I said, since I have this ample time, let me use it to practice more on art. Let me do uh, more portraits. Let me do more art pieces. You never know this can give me something. But all in all, I didn't see it as uh, something that would bring me work. One of my external friends who wasn't so close to me said, Eddie, do for me art. I said, OK, no problem. I'll do it for you. How much are you going to give to me? She said, I don't have money, but I really need it. Anyway, I said the trick I gave to her so I could earn more money. I said, you know what? I'll do for you at, we'll pay around 50,000 for a frame. Now she said, wow, really? Uh, I accepted, did for her the art piece. She gave me the money. I had a frame at home, <laughs> the one that I had put in uh, one of my pictures, a bigger frame. I removed it, cleaned it, put the art piece inside, took a photo, sent to her. So what happened, she put it on her status, through that, people started connecting me. I didn't know the price put on us. I wasn't even serious. I wasn't perfect. Actually, if you see uh, some of my first works that I did, you, you can't even imagine. I don't know if I have some here. Now, most were taken. I don't have some. But uh, people who are here uh, on this meeting, those who know me well, they know the work that I started with. It wasn't pleasing to me, much as people were appreciating. Yeah, nice, 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 nice. Uh, it wasn't pleasing. But I said, no, I have nothing to do. Corona is still there. They could open a few people, uh, essential workers, do this, do that. Me, I, I wasn't doing anything. Much as I had studied architecture, I hadn't planned in the field since I was in journalism for so long. I had uh, gotten addicted to journalism. So I didn't know anything in the field of that, the architecture stuff, like being at the site, being it by the sunshine. I wasn't used to that. I was used to going to the field, taking photos, writing a few captions, and, and uh, sending to media house for publication. That's how I was earning a living. And even uh, getting uh, adverts from people, earning commission. Anyway, I was used to seeing that money, you see? You know, for commission, you bring, uh, you get instantly money there. So I couldn't go to the field, to, to the site, to supervise people or do anything. So I said, let me give us some time, and I see. So the other friend I did uh, 
the app is four friends. Uh, they asked for the number. They booked. I didn't know the price. I said, okay, I do for 100. Someone who gave me 80, I could do for them. I saved some money, of course, from the rotation of friends. There was an opportunity uh, of going abroad in uh, Dubai. I went to a certain uh, group of people. We agreed I going to go to Dubai and do some work. They are going to be earning 3.5 million a month. So I was excited. I said, since I have saved this money, let me put in this so I can earn more. Of course, it wasn't enough. I had saved around, uh, I think, 1.85 something. I had some accessories at home. I had uh, microwave, TV, and so on. So I sold these other things to make the money these people needed. So I would go abroad and, and, and do some work, earn more money. So I needed money for my family. So I applied. Ah, you know how long it takes. They said after a week we are going. Oh, after a week. Ah, so we were going some day. It was thirty uh, first. The border was supposed to be closed in the midnight of that day. I don't remember where. Well. Since uh, Corona cases were many in Dubai, in uh, Asia, so. They had put a ban on Ugandans going to Dubai. So that very night, the same day I was supposed to go, then that very night is when the border was closing. So what happened is that I missed the flight. These people who were responsible, they messed up. I reached at the airport. They said I was going to find the ticket. I didn't find it. I inquired from the reception. They told me, you know what, your ticket is not in the system. Can imagine what happened. I almost corrupted. I almost corrupted. I called these people. They said, hey, they need more money. Give them more money. But I said, beautiful, I have paid all. I have paid everything that you needed. Why must I pay more money so I can really have what I need when I have already paid for the services? Like how many Ugandans behave? I have nothing to do to them. I'm not in, uh, I don't have power to do anything to them. So I'm disappointed. That's the last day someone is supposed to go to Dubai. Edwin, I missed the flight. So I came back. I didn't have where to stay. I went to my brother's place. I didn't talk for so close to two weeks, I didn't talk to anyone. After one week, I started losing some power. I started coughing and so on. I went to Mukono Hospital, tested for corona. I found I was positive. That was another issue. Now I fainted the more. Lost hopes. I was overthinking. These people already have my money. I have corona, I failed to go, I don't have anything. No house, no bed, no mattress, <laughs> nothing. I at my brother's place. I kept silent, I didn't talk to many people. Even uh, the close people of mine, I kept silent. I told them I was going, they kept on asking, what happened, what happened? I started uh, to neglect them because I had nothing to do to them. I think I spent like um, uh, like a month with Corona. After a month, after three weeks, I started uh, becoming fine. Then after a month, I was fine. Uh, within that period, there is uh, a madam. She's called uh, Madame Nora. She she's a she's an art teacher. She used to give me artwork. So. She, she called me, she said, Eddie, I need you to do for me the artwork. I didn't want to do anything. I said, you know what, you are going to, I used to charge her 100. I said, things have raised, because I didn't want to work. I said, everything has raised, the cost of paper, the cost of what. 
So you give me 150,000 each. She said, but I have been doing this at 100. I said, that is it, because I didn't want to work. That's the truth. I had lost hope, I had lost everything. So she said, okay, no problem, start, start on working. I said, you have to deposit. She sent me 200,000 very night. I saw money on my phone. I'd taken long without money. As asking, I was always online, by the way, but I used to ask for data from my friend. Madame Nora, after she sent me that money, I went to the supermarket, bought some yogurt. I went to KFC, me, I have never gone to KFC. I bought some good chicken, sat down there, ate all the 60,000, came back home with hopes. <laughs> the following day, I went and bought papers. Do you remember when I was going, my papers, my pencils, the tables, all I had, I had burnt all. I was saying, ah, I'm leaving this up behind. Let me go to where there are green pastures. But I was shocked when the following day I had to wake up to do the same work. I got 50,000 on the same money, both papers and pencils. I started from there. Since then, I've never gone back. Some big people started giving me uh, some work until I got four million. The four million that I got, I don't know if you people can see well. When I got four million, I purchased this. This is a, a very big candle. I purchased it new from town. So after buying this machine, I, I also bought uh, this speed light. Where the phone is hanging is the stand and the Saturn light. I bought those stuff. I started getting it. That was around, uh, I think, December last year. Yeah, December last year. So early January, there is some um, top general who gave me a and then those men to, to paint his walls with some portraits of big people. Within that amount of money, I bought a small piece of land in Nansana. I've already gotten a booking for photography. People are booking photography. Over the weekend, I made timetable. I have to do art from Monday to Friday. Then from Friday evening, Saturday, and Sunday, I mean, events. I take pictures for red paper for events. Then um, there's the birthday parties, Kwanjura uh, introduction, all are over the weekend. So I've mastered the weekend, take photographs, and during the working days, I take, I do art. Because you can't do fine art at night, you need natural light. You need uh, concentration, enough time, and so on to do that art. Before photography, it's art that have done so much. Around uh, December, some top, top, top newspaper, they, I think they used to follow me uh, on Twitter, Facebook. They called me and asked for an interview. They asked about my journey. I explained in an article. They asked about the challenges that I faced. There are very many challenges. You see, with fine art, for example, this is an art piece of the first stand. The first stand, uh, Commander land force uh, UPDF. Most of you know him. He's called Mos Kilergala. Now, the challenge is this picture, this art piece is very big. You see how big it is. When I try to put it on me, you will eventually see that it's big. You see, I'm short. But as I'm short, I'm a human being. <laughs> but this this art piece is big, almost bigger than me. 
So now, the major challenge is transportation. Such a nut piece it has a lot of risk transporting it to the owner. Yesterday, today is Tuesday, on, on Sunday, I was hosted on one of the TVs called Baba TV. So I had to take there this art piece on uh, a TV show to show to people what I actually do. So getting this art piece, taking it uh, to Tinda where the TV station is located on the border border. Do you see this? Yes. I was handling it with care. I was handling it with care, but the frame got spoiled. These ones are not yet framed. They are all art pieces. But if I had framed one, you'd actually have seen uh, the frame. They are also bigger. This size, when uh, the size is like this, the frame is a bit bigger. So the challenge is still there, transportation of stuff. When you decide to give to the border guy to deliver this work for you, they break the frame. You have to make losses. You have to, you see this mirror that is on top, it's expensive because it's hard. I put my ass pieces uh, in expensive frames. So when they break this mirror, I get into losses. This frame that you see here, bigger to see, it is 200,000, the frame only. So when this one breaks and I need to fix, I cannot fix this second-hand fixation to take this outfit to the first-hand office. No, I need to have to, to buy another friend. That's the road already. That was the first challenge. Another challenge is darkness. Then another challenge is payment. For example, I've done... Uh, some art pieces for celebrities, but they don't want to pay. They pay less or they don't want to pay. Someone you do for them, they work, they say, bring it, I'll pay. You have put in transport, take it somewhere, they don't want to pay. All they do is to buy for you some coffee, expensive coffee for like 7,000 when you need your money. And in your heart, you say, what if you gave me that money to keep it? Because I'm still saving, I need to do more, more, a lot of work. Some of another work of mine. This is a very bigger size. This is one of the top of officials of the country, Jim Wesley. This size is not as big as this. This is Mora, this is A3, this is A2. So the prices range. This one is 150 framed. This one is 350 to 550 frames depending on uh, the quality of the frame. Of course, there are cheaper frames that uh, get the work destroyed within the less period of time. Then the advice that I can give to, to the young people, don't give up. That word is heavy and is for the brave. I missed the fright, cried, got corona, had no money, had nowhere to stay, but I didn't give up. I woke up on my feet and I said, you know what? It's me versus me. Had I known, it's bad. But if Corona didn't come, I really wouldn't be here talking to you people. Corona was bad, it was terrible, but it taught me too much. It taught me lots of lessons, it gave me courage to be who I am. Don't follow what people say, do what you want. They have met very big people I, didn't, I never knew I would meet. I've been on TV, I've, uh, uh, I've covered by the most read newspaper, the biggest newspaper, New Vision. Daily Monitor has contacted me, Drogs website, they have done that. And I'm looking forward to meeting the first son to present the art piece I did to him. So that's how far an art can take you. That's how far you can be great. Only if you believe in yourself, 
money delay is to come. That's the fact. You need patience. You need patience in art and photography. That is it. Thank you, Eddie. I just wanted to appreciate it. I'll tell you what, you have really overcame a lot of obstacles. And you know, the encouraging thing about you is that you face one obstacle, you overcome it, and then you have another obstacle and you overcome that. Then you have another obstacle and you overcome that. So you're being resourceful. You're not giving up, you're setting an example. Yeah. And regardless of whether you had the, the finances or the ability to do things, you kept working, you kept being resourceful, kept pushing on. And that's why you're enjoying the success that you're enjoying right now. You taught yourself the things you needed to learn. You, even though sometimes, you know, sometimes we can get depressed, okay? Sometimes we yeah. can get discouraged yeah. and, and aggravated, okay? But what we do is it's okay to get down. It's okay to get discouraged, but we then have to pick ourselves back up, okay? That's the example that you gave to us, Eddie Jack, is that you picked yourself back up. But you didn't just pick yourself back up one time. You had to pick yourself up again and again and again and again. Again and again. Yes. And that's our lesson for today that we're going to take home for you is that we just need to consistently move forward in whatever our dream and vision is. And the other thing I heard is that you didn't get up. You didn't give up. Okay. You didn't give up. You kept Ah, even though you had to slow down for a little while or you had to take on some other jobs to make some money, okay? You had to figure out yeah. how you were going to take and pay rent and how you're going to buy food, okay? You had to do yeah. those things, but you did what you needed to do. I remember one, one time you said you were able to spend, you had to spend a couple of days working over there and then like three days doing your art and back and back and forth. So you did what you needed to do to be successful. So thank you for that message. We appreciate it very much.